self-love, Emily Pop. I believe that there is a bit of a stigma that comes with being a very confident person. This is something that I completely disagree with. If you think you did amazing at that presentation at work, or that you look really great in that outfit, you should embrace that confidence. I've told my close friends before that I want to be so confident that it's almost offensive. Like, <laughs> offensive. Like, Kanye West offensive. <laughs> if you don't know who Kanye West is, just know that he's a rapper who's notorious for having a huge ego. He's an awful role model in a lot of ways, but he's sort of my self-confidence idol. In a 2005 interview, he was quoted as saying, Come on now, how could you be me and want to be someone else? A lot of people might think this is in bad taste, but I actually think it's kind of admirable. He sounds like a really happy and satisfied man. I think that we all should have the amount of love for ourselves that Kanye West has for himself. Well, I'm not quite Kanye West status yet, I feel like I'm getting pretty close. Sometimes with my close friends, I don't do this with everyone, but if my close friends compliment me, I might say something like, thanks, I know. <laughs> this is often met with an eye roll or a sarcastic comment about how humble I am but it makes me feel good to admit out loud when I am proud of myself. This is one of the ways I practice something called radical self-love, which is just a way of practicing a sort of appreciation and love for yourself despite the stigma that might come with being a prideful person. You can do this in several ways. Some of the ways I've done it is learning to love my body, love myself by spending time alone, and also overcoming a fear of obstacles and failures. I hope today you all can get some direction in your lives to learn how you can also love yourselves a little bit more every day. In today's society, it's really hard to love your body when you're constantly bombarded by images left and right about what the ideal body type is. What helped me was to realize that everyone is different. Everyone's DNA is different. I can't compare myself to a supermodel because that would be comparing apples to oranges. Instead, the nerd in me likes to really think about the science of the human body because I think it's amazing. Consider this. Your skin replaces itself once a month, your stomach lining every five days, your liver every six weeks, and your skeleton every three months. Your body really is extraordinary. Begin to appreciate it. Also remember that your body is not an ornament of life, it is an instrument of life. You can use it to climb mountains, lift weights, create art, or create life if you're so inclined. Treat your body like you would your best friend, because it really is going to be there for you the rest of your life. You would never direct a lot of negative thoughts towards someone who is your best friend. Nourish your body, occasionally exercise it, and try to let go of the unreasonable expectations society might set for us. As philosopher Alan Watts said, Waking up to who you are requires letting go of who you imagine yourself to be. Another way to wake up to who you are is really getting to know yourself. And I think the best way to do this is to spend time alone. The only company that you're guaranteed for the rest of your life is the company that you can provide yourself. I believe that the relationship you have with yourself needs to be nourished just like a relationship you have with a friend, a family member, or a significant other. So I encourage you all to take baby steps to spend time alone. You can start with spending time alone where it's socially acceptable, like the coffee shop, 
or the library, the gym, maybe try the lunch counter, then dinner, maybe even go out dancing and dance like no one's watching because you know they really probably aren't watching at all. <laughs> Finally, I encourage you to go on a trip by yourself. I was lucky enough to be able to do this about a month ago. I went to Portland and every single day I woke up at 6 a.m., went on a hike, spent the rest of the day exploring the city and going to the weirdest Portlandish vegan restaurants I could find. And it was a blast. When was the last time that you've gone on a trip or even had a day where you did exactly what you wanted to do, how you wanted to do it, and when you wanted to do it? When you spend time by yourself, you might find out that you'll actually have a blast and get to know yourself more when you spend more time in your head instead of in your cell phone. Once you begin to appreciate your own company, you might have more confidence in yourself, begin to love yourself, and be more daring to take on other challenges in life. Which brings me to my final stepping stone, which is overcoming a fear of failure or obstacles. In my short life, the most challenging obstacle that I have probably had to overcome was when I made the transition from being a student to being a real life human being working in industry. <laughs> when I first became an intern, it was a rough wake up call for me. I was in no way prepared to apply what I learned in school to the real world. I had total imposter syndrome because I had such low self-confidence. I was convinced that I was hired by a mistake, that I wasn't smart enough or good enough to do what they asked of me. I would even take my work home and work until 2 in the morning and then come back to work at 7 the next day and do it all again. It took me a long time to finally realize that I'm enough and that it's okay to struggle just as long as you keep struggling. If you think about it, if there weren't any obstacles in life, it would be so boring. Everything would be stagnant. There wouldn't be the next big hill to climb. By overcoming this one obstacle in my life, it's given me a lot of confidence to take on other obstacles and embrace the challenges in my life. By practicing radical self-love, I've open myself up to many more experiences, relationships, and challenges in my life. I encourage all of you to examine your own relationships with your body, with yourself, and with the obstacles you have in your everyday life. I hope that one day you too might be able to field a compliment and say something like, thanks, I know, I am pretty great. <laughs> officially a competent communicator by Toastmasters standards. So we're digging for a pin to give to her in celebration of this event. This is the first, the first step on the Toastmaster journey. Of course it's the last box. There, it's in the bottom box. Right. I don't know. Uh, and we'll get a pin. We'll get it. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you.